Welcome to Congleton High's BBC Newsday. Our main stories today are animal testing, Afghanistan, the Olympics, road safety, Universal Studios, junk food and preparing for exams. But first, on a local front, a steamboat could set sail away from Congleton as the town's residents say they want it gone. They say it's a disgrace to the town. Congleton's people have been a fine voice today as they express as they express their views on animal testing. We went to West Hill in the co-op to find out what other people's views were on animal rights. All of our meat, as it says on the labels there, is higher welfare standard as recognised by the government, where the animals have space to thrive, so the animals are treated a lot better than a lot of other places. And these are their eggs and they're all free range. First of all, what do you think about animal testing? I think that sometimes it's necessary for things like uh, medicines, but I think for things like cosmetics, um, I think that's necessary. I don't really like it, but I think it's necessary. If we want to make progress in this world, then we have to do certain things that we ethically don't like, I think. I mean, I can't speak for all vets, but personally, um, I think animal testing can be justified for uh, medical research. Um, but not for cosmetic research. What do you think we could do to stop this from happening? So I always check when I'm buying cosmetics and things that it says not tested animals. Well, I don't think you can do anything. Get a law passed in Parliament. We need to develop new methods of testing drugs using cell lines rather than using live animals. And we need to reduce the amount of animals used wherever possible. Do you think the government would have time to deal with this situation? Yes, I think it is important that government makes time, really encourages companies not to use animal testing for things like cosmetics and also to back up um, companies that manufacture medicines that need to animal test that they provide the right support for them as well. I think the government does do something towards it but um, you know, they probably need to, to put more emphasis on it sometimes, yeah. Information is coming through now about the latest news on the tragic Belgian bus crash where 22 children and six adults have died and the cause of the crash remains a mystery but is thought that the coach driver may have been taken ill. Today there are many dangers in the world, roads being one of them. We interviewed some students on what they think about crossing the road outside school. How do you feel about crossing the road outside school? It's alright. Where do you cross the road? Traffic lights. What do you think about crossing the road outside school? I think it can be very dangerous because there's a lot of cars. Do you ever get scared crossing the road? Sometimes, depending on how many cars there are. How do you feel about crossing the road outside school? It's pretty simple. Just pick a point where there isn't many cars. Where do you cross the road outside school? Well, go out the gates and a couple of yards and then just cross the road. It's really nice and safe. I like it, yeah. And then we interviewed some teachers on what they thought. I do think it would be a good idea um, as you've already said to me before, if we had a zebra crossing outside school, right outside school in the middle of Box Lane, because that would give students the opportunity when they leave school at the end of the day to go straight across the zebra crossing and not to have to cross at any other part of the road and put themselves in any danger from traffic coming through the traffic lights. What do you think about students crossing the road outside school? I think it's really dangerous and I'm really concerned about it because some accidents will happen and have happened and it will put students' lives at risk. And how do you think this problem could be avoided? Um, I think if people drove slower along Box Lane it would help. And maybe just you know, make people a bit more aware about how to cross the road sensibly it might be a good thing. So what have we learned from this? Cars drive too fast, or students are too reckless, or maybe there's too much traffic on the road. One thing's for sure, we, we need a zebra crossing. Following David Cameron's visit to the White House, Congleton's residents were asked about our role in Afghanistan. Sure, our troops we pulled up Afghanistan is a frequently asked question at the moment. David Cam discussing it with Barack Obama yesterday. Also, six British soldiers being killed in an explosion last week. A US soldier killed 16 Afghan civilians on Sunday and an attempted attack on the US Defence Secretary at the main British base in Rome. So, is this time for our troops to return home? Here's what some members of the British public think. Like I say, I didn't think they should be there in the first place. It's all about all your own things, and they've, they've gone in there, they should be out of there. 
they haven't gone into Syria. Different kettle of fish, they shouldn't have gone in there in the first place. It's not really our war. I don't think in Afghanistan, it's nothing to do with us. And it's fighting a guerrilla war in somebody else's country. We don't really win unless you've got the support of the population, which we don't seem to have. Well, I don't think they should ever have been in Afghanistan anyway, because there was no threat to us. So, uh, I think they should have come out years ago. They're just in there to save the faces of the politicians. is suffering as this is being overtaken by other nations. We, we recently spoke to a range of teachers about their thoughts on how to prepare for an exam. This is for all you out there who, who are taking exams this summer. Here's some advice on how to prepare for your exam. My top tip to pass art GCSE is to use after school sessions in order to finish any unfinished coursework and exam work. My big main tip is this, okay? In your revision top tips booklet, I'll put a page in here, loads of top tips of things that you can do to help you to revise. But the main thing that I would say to you is revision is not about remembering things, memorising stuff. So make it memorable. It's not about doing or learning, it's about making it memorable. My top tip is to know your exam timetable and to prepare yourself well in advance. Have a revision timetable. When revising, make sure that you have chunked time, no more longer than 15 minutes, because otherwise you'll lose concentration. You could use case study cards, you could do concept maps as an example. I particularly like annotated diagrams. My top tip is to make a timetable and to break the topics down. Don't revise all one thing at once. Hello, my top tip for your exam revision um, this year is to use mind maps. Mind maps help you to um, look at information in a logical way and because it's visual and it's colourful, it's easy to remember. So that's what the experts say about how to prepare for your exam. So it's down to you to prepare. Good luck. Earlier this week, Anne Brightwell came into the studio to talk about her experiences in the 1964 Olympics along with Sophie Pyatt, our school's hope for the future. Hello, I'm here to talk about the Olympics 2012 about their experiences both past and present. I started training seriously with athletics when I was about 14, 15. I won a, a bronze medal in the women's 4 by 100 meter relay in the European Championships two years earlier than the Olympics and also two years earlier later in the year I won a silver medal in the relay at the Commonwealth Championships. Being a Get Set School means that we try to encourage our students to live out the Olympic and Paralympic values of, for example, excellence, respect, friendship, courage, inspiration, determination. These values are really important to us. When I was little, I was wanting to be like a professional swimmer, and then when Whenever that we do well, whether it's cricket or football or swimming, whatever sport, I think that it lifts the whole country. And I know that's going to happen this year again because uh, hopefully we're going to have a lot of success. But in any case, just to be able to see top people, best people in the world competing at different sports is going to be such an exciting time. Today's a really exciting day for us because today we actually get the news about um, the allocation of tickets 
for the Olympics we are to receive six tickets and I have actually heard today that we are to receive six tickets for students to go with, with parents or accompanying adults to go to the Olympics. With the Olympics at the forefront of our minds, just how fit are we as a nation? The West Sea Chippy is just one of the many fast food restaurants in Congleton and here's Subway. Many people think that it's a healthy option because of its fresh bread and healthy veg, but it's not. Over to you Izzy. I only have about two main junky snacks a day. I have one at lunch and then one after my tea and that's about it really. Do you think about what will happen to you if you start to eat junk food all the time? Um, yeah, I do, because I get quite worried about it, because I don't want to be someone that's fat all the, all the time or anything like that. I just want to be normal, really. How much junk food do you think you eat? Well, I don't really have takeaways that often, but I do eat like chocolate bars and stuff every day. Right, and do you think about what will happen to you if you start to eat junk food all the time? Mm, you probably got unhealthy, but I don't think it's that bad because I don't really eat takeaways and they're like full of fat and everything. I just eat like a couple of small chocolate bars a day for school. So. How much junk food do you think you eat? Well, not much. What do you think will happen to you if you eat too much junk food? I'll probably grow a bit wider. How much junk food do you think you eat? I don't eat quite, I don't eat a lot because it's just that. I think it makes me look, uh, look really fat. Do you think about what will happen to you if you start to eat junk food all the time? Yeah, I'll get really fat and I won't be able to move. I'll be like one of the world's fattest men. It's okay as long as you don't eat it all the time. I think it's got a lot to answer for in terms of the health of the nation, the health of students in school. Um, the fact that people are overweight and um, it should be banned. And I have to admit, more than once in my life, I've eaten a kebab. It's good occasionally, but I wouldn't like to live on junk food. I think there's too much of it. I think it has a, a negative impact on everybody's health. And I think that's borne out by the fact that we have a, a problem with obesity, particularly childhood obesity, and we put that all down to junk food. So what have we learned from today? We've learned that youth our age know about the effects of junk food. And hopefully this will stop them from getting obesity. And finally, if you are heartily fed up with talking of the Olympics, we will finish with a story from across the Atlantic involving Universal Studios. <laughs> Hi, my name is Isabella and I'm going to interview Gemma and Sophie about Jules the Ride in Universal Studios Orlando. So, was you aware of the ride just from now on? Yeah, we'd heard a rumour about it. Yeah, uh, we weren't sure if it was true or not. When did it shut down? I think it was a couple of months ago when it shut down. So, was that your favourite ride there? It was one of them. I don't think you can pinpoint one ride though because there's so many. So do you think it will put tourists off going back to Universal Studios? No, I don't think so. Orlando is a really popular tourist destination, what with Disney and SeaWorld there as well. Um, and with the Wisdom World, new at Universal, that's made tourist numbers even higher than ever. Okay then, thank you for talking to me. Jenny Reese says, I am so saddened by this news. Was hoping for my son to ride this for the first time in October of 2012. I love the Joe's ride. It was and still one of the best movies ever made. And Universal Orlando should try to retain some of the nostalgia given to the classics. First Kong, now this. They should at least give more notice if a classic ride will close, as I would have planned to holiday earlier to ride it one last time. It's not easy just popping over from the UK. Joshua Council said, Dude, brutal, this is my favorite ride at the park. I'm all up for new ideas, but Universal better have something incredible up their sleeves to replace the side plan. David Hadden said, SOS, save our shark. Mark Fairley says, All I can say is truly sad. It's a classic, and Amity is a fantastic area. I'll trust Universal to wow us, but I'm really sad by this. Now I'm afraid for E.T. Thank you for listening to the news report from Congleton High School, Cheshire.